Hi, my name is Sally. Welcome and welcome back. For this tutorial, I will be using two different color of yarn. I'll be using brown for the granny square and also white for the border and also the mifis. And then I'm going to be using two different size of crochet hooks. So the first one is going to be 4.0 ml crochet hook and then I'll be using 3.5 ml crochet hook. So this one is for the granny square and this one is for the Mifi's hat. And then you will need a pair of scissors, a darning needle and lots of stitch markers. Now all of these materials is totally optional so this is totally up to you so for the eyes and mouth i use a black felt i just cut them up really small and then glue it on with a fabric glue then for the mifis i use a hot glue to glue it onto the granny square just because i don't want to sew it because it's going to take me a long time to just sew it onto the granny square so this one is totally up to you you can either sew it or just glue it on like me then I also added a ribbon on my bag just as a decoration so this is totally up to you and then I also added some fabric lining to my bag so for this granny square you will have to start off with a magic ring first so to do your magic ring first we're going to use these two fingers so you're going to hold the end of your yarn like this and then you're going to wrap around your two fingers you will have this x shape on the middle like this and then turn your finger to the front and with your ring finger hold onto the yarn then you will have the first and second loop and then with your crochet hook you're going to insert it through the first loop and then grab onto the second loop and then twist it up like this and then you're going to take your working yarn and then pull it through the chain that you created with your hook now this is how you're going to do your magic ring and then just tighten up the chain now to start off i am going to show you two methods the first one is the chain three method and then the second one is the fake double crochet method so what's the difference between the chain three and fake double crochet is if you're doing the chain three method on a granny square you will have kind of like a gap beside the chain three which is maybe like for example this is my chain three and then you're going to have a gap right here and then again if this is my chain three you will have kind of like a gap right here so i don't really recommend the chain three method however the fake double crochet is going to be a little hard for beginners so if you try out the fake double crochet and find it hard just go ahead and do the chain three so i'm going to show you the chain three method first after you have done your magic ring go ahead and just chain three so one two three so your chain three is always going to be your first double crochet and first step for every round and then after that you're just going to continue with the pattern which is inserting the double crochet into your magic ring so there is just a difference on the first step for every round whether you guys are doing the chain three or fake double crochet method now for the fake double crochet once you have done your magic ring you're just going to pull your loop like this and then you're going to hold onto your loop and you're going to yarn over your loop like so so for this you really have to hold onto your loop because if you let go of your loop then this is what's going to happen so you don't want this so you hold onto your loop and then yarn over your loop and then you will have two loops on your hook and then go ahead and insert your hook into your magic ring yarn over and pull up a loop and then you have three loops on your hook and then yarn over and pull through the first two loops one and two and now you can let go of your loop and it will not unravel like before and then you're just going to yarn over and pull through the two loops so now this is how you're going to do your fake double crochet so the fake double crochet provides a cleaner look which is why i like to do the fake double crochet and i really recommend that you guys use this method for this granny square but if you cannot do this method then just go ahead and do the chain three method so if you are doing the fake double crochet method this is going to be your first step for every round then after you have done the chain three or fake double crochet method which is going to be your first stage for every round you're just going to do whatever this step says because it's going to be the same pattern from there now 
we're going to insert two double crochet into your magic ring one and two then you're going to make one treble crochet so yarn over two times and insert your hook yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two loops yarn over and pull through two loops yarn over and pull through two loops now you will need your stitch marker or you can use a bobby pins or anything you have so you're going to mark the treble crochet that you just did so go ahead and mark it now we're going to continue by making three double crochet one two and three and then one treble crochet and again take your stitch marker and mark your treble crochet and then continue making three double crochet and then one treble crochet and you're going to take your stitch marker and mark the treble crochet then you're going to do three double crochet again so one two and three and then make one treble crochet And you're going to mark the treble crochet so you should have four stitch markers on your granny square so this step is really important because in each of these stitch markers we're going to insert an increase which is going to help make our granny square bigger now you're going to pull the end of your magic ring to close up the hole After that, you're going to insert your hook into your fake double crochet or chain 3 and make a slip stitch. If you're doing the fake double crochet method, you will have this V shape right here. That is where you're going to insert your slip stitch. So insert your hook into the V shape. And I usually just use my nail to get into it because it is kind of hard to get into. And make a slip stitch. And what I usually do is I'm just going to pull the loop to tighten up the slip stitch just so that it's not as visible. Now remember that we are doing a granny square so we are going to have four sides. Basically the four sides is going to be the corner of your granny square. So what you're going to do for round two until round four is you're just going to insert one double crochet in each of the stitches except for the treble crochet that you mark so for every round you're going to mark the one treble crochet in each corner and in each of the stitch marker which is the one treble crochet you're going to insert a cluster so basically a cluster is going to be two double crochet and then one treble crochet and two double crochet again in the same stitch here which is the stitch that you mark so I'm going to show you an example on how we're going to do it. So if you're doing the chain 3 method, just go ahead and chain 3. 1, 2, 3. And this is going to be your first stitch or your first double crochet. And then you're just going to continue with these steps which start in the second stitch. And the steps is going to remain the same. Just that there's a difference in how you're going to start your first stitch. So for example, I'm doing it with the chain 3 method. So you'll have to insert one double crochet in each stitch until you reach the stitch marker. So skip the first stitch because this is your first stitch. And make one double crochet into the next. Again, one double crochet into the next until you reach the stitch marker. 
so this is the gap that i'm talking about you can see that there's a gap here which i don't really like and then you're going to insert the cluster into your stitch marker which is two double crochet one treble crochet and two double crochet so this is how you're going to do it if you're doing the chain three method it's still going to be the same step now for those who are doing this fake double crochet method go ahead and pull up your loop like this and continue making your fake double crochet and you're going to insert your fake double crochet into your first stitch right here so insert your hook into the first stitch yarn over and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through two yarn over and pull through two so that is how you're going to do it if you're doing the fake double crochet and then you're going to continue inserting one double crochet in each stitch until you reach the stitch marker now you can see that there is no gap when you're doing the fake double crochet method which is why i recommend that you guys do the fake double crochet method now we're going to insert a cluster into the place with the stitch marker a cluster means you're going to insert all of the stitches into the same stitch and this is what going to be your cornice for the granny square so the pattern for the cluster is first you're going to do two double crochet into the same stitch one and two and insert one treble crochet again into the same stitch then you're going to mark this one treble crochet because you're going to insert a cluster in the one treble crochet in the next round and finish off the cluster by making two double crochet again into the same stitch one and two so that is going to be these steps for round two until round four it's just going to be the same thing and again you're going to insert one double crochet in each of this stitch until you reach the stitch marker and again in the stitch marker you're going to insert a cluster so insert two double crochet into the same stitch one two and then make one treble crochet into the same stitch again and take your stitch marker and mark the treble crochet and then finish off this cluster by making two double crochet one and two so go ahead and repeat this step until you reach the last stitch marker right here so now i am making my last cluster in the last stitch marker one and two double crochet and then one treble crochet and then mark the treble crochet that you just did and then insert two double crochet into the same stitch so to finish off this round you're going to insert a slip stitch into your first stitch which is your fake double crochet or chain three and i'm going to pull my loop to tighten up this slip stitch so the method is going to be the same thing and you're going to repeat this until you have reached round four so basically you're going to do this for two more rounds so you're going to insert one double crochet in each of this stitch until you reach the stitch marker which is going to be your one treble crochet in the last round and then in each of this stitch marker you're going to insert a cluster which is two double crochet one treble crochet and two double crochet into the same stitch into the same stitch that have your stitch marker so go ahead and repeat this step until you finish round four so i'm going to show you on how to change your color to make the border like this so on round four i'm going to do my last double crochet first 
so I'm going to pull through the first two loops and before you finish off this last double crochet you're going to go ahead and take your other color and just make a loop like this and then put it on top of your hook and you're going to hold the end of the yarn at the back side like this so you have control over it and it's not sliding around then you're going to pull through the two loops with your new color then you're going to hold these two yarns at the back of your granny squares like this then just go ahead and insert your hook into your fake double crochet or chain three and you're going to work over these two yarns at the back of your granny square so go ahead and just put it on top of your hook like this and make a slip stitch and I'm just going to tighten up this slip stitch now we're going to continue making the border so to make the border you're going to chain one and you're going to insert one single crochet into the same stitch so insert your hook into the same stitch yarn over and pull up a loop and then you have two loops on your hook yarn over and pull through two so this is going to be your first single crochet and just continue inserting one single crochet until you reach the stitch marker right here Once you have reached the stitch marker, which is your one treble crochet in the last round, go ahead and insert one single crochet, one half double crochet, and one single crochet into the same stitch. So I'm going to make one single crochet first, and then I'm going to insert one half double crochet into the same stitch. So yarn over and insert your hook into the same stitch yarn over and pull up a loop and then you have three loops on your hook so go ahead and yarn over and pull through all three loops and insert one single crochet into the same stitch so that's going to be the cluster that you have to do in each of this stitch marker and for the rest of it you're just going to insert one single crochet so go ahead and repeat this step till you reach the end of your stitch right here so basically you're going to insert one single crochet in each of the stitches right here and then insert one cluster into the stitch marker which is one single crochet, one half double crochet and one single crochet and then one single crochet in each of the stitches right here and again a cluster, one single crochet in each of the stitch right here and a cluster. To finish off round 5 go ahead and insert your hook into the first single crochet that you did in this round and make a slip stitch and then tighten up this slip stitch and then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn and then pull through and tighten up the chain one to the back like this so that your work won't unravel now you're going to repeat all of these steps and make 18 more granny squares you will need a total of 19 granny squares to make this top bag now we're going to get started by making the Mifi's hat so to start off the Mifi's hat you're going to do a magic ring now we're going to insert 12 double crochets into the magic ring and for the first double crochet you can either do the chain 3 or fake double crochet method so if you're doing the chain 3 method just go ahead and do chain 3 and then continue inserting 11 double crochets into your real or fake magic ring and as for me I'm going to do the fake double crochet as my first stitch So this is going to be my first double crochet. Now I'm just going to continue inserting 11 double crochets into my magic ring. So I have a total of 12 double crochets. Two. Three. Four. So I have 12 double crochets with me. Now I'm just going to pull the end of my magic ring and pull the end of your magic ring to close off the middle like this. Now we're going to insert a slip stitch into your first stitch. Your first stitch is going to be your chain 3 or fake double crochet. So go ahead and insert your hook into your first stitch and make a slip stitch. 
Now I'm going to carry this yarn as I work over my double crochet so that I don't have to weave it in. Now we're going to insert an increase in each of the stitches. So an increase means you're going to insert two single crochets into the same stitch. So if you're doing the chain three method, just go ahead and chain three. One, two, and three. And this is going to be your first double crochet. Then yarn over and insert one double crochet into the first stitch. So this is going to be your first increase. Then just continue with the rest of the patterns, which is inserting two double crochet in each of the stitches. Now for the fake double crochet method, just go ahead and make your fake double crochet into the first stitch. So this is going to be my first double crochet then i'm just going to insert one more double crochet into the same stitch to complete my increase so this is going to be my first increase then continue into the second stitch and inserting an increase again which is basically two double crochet into the same stitch So that's going to be my second increase. So I'll just continue with this step until you reach the end of this round. And at the end, you will have a total of 24 stitches. So to finish off this round, just go ahead and make a slip stitch into your first stitch. Now to fasten off, just chain one and cut your yarn. Then pull through and Pull your yarn to the back to tighten up the chain one. Now we're going to make the ears. So to make the ears, first we're going to do a slip knot. So to make a slip knot, just hold onto the end of your yarn and put your yarn on top of your index finger. Then twist your finger to the front. Now you have the X shape at the bottom right here. Then just release the yarn from your finger while still keeping its shape. And then put your yarn on top of the loop that you have created. And then from the back, just pull it. So this is going to be your slip knot. Now just tighten it up. Now we're going to chain 8. So just go ahead and yarn over and pull through. Now go ahead and make this until you have 8 chains. So now this is how your chain is going to look like. Now when you turn your chain to the back, you have these bumps at the back of your chain. So you're going to insert your stitches into the back bump. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So go ahead and yarn over. And you're going to skip the first back bump right here and insert your hook into the next back bump. So insert your hook into the next back bump. And it's easier if you use your nail to get into the back bump. Then pull up a loop. And then yarn over and pull through all three loops. So that's going to be your first half double crochet. Then just continue inserting your half double crochet into the back bumps until you have a total of six double crochets. Three. Four. Five. and six and then in the last stitch right here we're going to insert three half double crochet into the same stitch one and insert two more half double crochet into the same stitch two and three now we're going to continue and make six half double crochet on the other side. Now we're going to insert your hook into the next stitch. You can just follow the half double crochet that you just did on this side. So this is the half double crochet, which means you're going to insert your hook on the opposite of the half double crochet right here. And continue making six half double crochet. So one. two three four five and your last 
last stitch and six now we're just going to chain one and you're going to leave a long end so you can use this to sew on the ears onto the head so just pull through all of the yarn and set up the chain one so this is going to be your first ear so go ahead and repeat this step and make one more so once you have the pieces for the ears you're going to sew it onto the hat now this is the place where you fasten off you're going to make sure that the place is facing upwards and you're going to use this place where we fasten off as a space in between of the ears so we're going to sew on the ears on the right and left side and we're going to use these three stitches right here and we're going to sew it onto these three stitches right here and you're going to leave this middle part which is the chain one where we fasten off and then we're going to sew it on again on the left side in the three stitches right here so i'm going to start and sew it on the right side first so we're just going to align the three stitches together like this and i'm going to insert my needle from the back and just sew it on and then just go to the space right here and pull through like so and you're going to pull it really tightly just so that the yarn is not as visible and it kind of like blend in together and then from the back I'm going through the second stitch and go to the middle right here and pull it slightly and again from the back I'm going to go through the third stitch and then I'm going to insert my needle through this stitch right here and I'm going to insert my needle once again through the third stitch and into the stitch right here now we're just going to weave in this remaining yarn at the back side and then just cut it now the Mifi's hat does look a little weird but once you place it onto the granny square you're just going to sew it on and try to keep it in shape like this and you're just going to sew it onto the granny square like this or just glue it on but for me i decided to just glue it onto the granny square because it's just so much easier that way and then before you sew it and glue it on you can add the eyes and also the mouth for the movies i use a felt fabric for the eyes and mouth i just cut them up really small and then glue it onto the head you can also use yarn to sew on the eyes and mouth so you're going to need 12 hemifis head and then you're going to make 19 granny squares so you're going to have 12 granny squares with the mifis head on top of it for the front and back panel and then you will have seven granny squares for the bottom and side piece now you will notice your granny squares look weird which is why you will always need to block your granny square for it to stay in a square shape there are so many ways to do it and i decided to just steam it because it's faster this way so i'm just going to go ahead and steam it then I'm going to cool it down a little bit and I'm going to pull the side gently to adjust the shape. I'm going to do this a few times until I like how it looks. At the end, this is how mine looked like. So I'm going to do this for all the granny squares. Then we're going to sew 6 granny squares for the front and back panel. So you will have 2 of these pieces. So I'm going to sew the 3 bottom pieces first. So to sew it together, we're going to make the face facing inwards like this. And this is the part that we're going to sew. So align the two pieces like this and make the faces facing each other like this. We're going to start sewing from the first single crochet that we did in the cluster for both pieces. So this is the first stitch in the cluster and I'm just going to insert my needle through the top loop only and then pull through. Then I'm going to tie two knots to secure it up.
After that, you're just going to insert your needle in the next stitch, just the top loops of both pieces. Make sure that all the stitches are lined up together when sewing it, then pull through. And when your yarn is facing this way, just insert your needle like this. So just repeat this step until you reach the last yarn crochet that you did in the cluster. So now this is the last yarn crochet that I did in the cluster, so I'm going to sew it together. Once you have done sewing it, from the back, insert your needle through the same place and pull through. Then insert it through the loop to tie a knot. I'm going to do this one more time. Then you're just going to take your scissor and cut. Now go ahead and repeat the same step to sew the pieces together. You will sew it here and then sew the three granny squares for the top pieces too. You will have three granny squares all sewed up for the top and bottom pieces. Now we're going to sew these two pieces together starting from the cluster here all the way to the last stitches in the cluster. The steps are the same as before so just repeat the step. When you are done you will continue sewing the back panel too. So at the end you will have two pieces with six granny squares all sewed up. Then you will also sew two granny squares like this for this side. You will have two of these pieces for the right and left side. Then you will also sew three granny squares together for the bottom. Just make sure that when you sew it, the right side are facing inwards so that all the right side is facing the right way. After you are done making all the panels, you're going to join all the panels like this. This is the order on how you're going to join them. Join the side panel and the six granny squares here, which is my front panel. Then the side panel and the back panel. Once you are done, it's going to look something like this. Then you're going to face the right side inwards like this, just like always. Then sew these two sides together using the same step as before. Now this is going to be our last piece that we're going to sew on. So this piece is going to be at the bottom of your bag. So we're going to sew it on the bottom here and this is going to be the opening of your bag. To sew it on, we're just going to sew this side first into here. But again, we're going to have to make sure that this right side is going to face each other like this. So we're just going to make the right side facing this side right here like this and it's going to be the same exact step again which is you're going to start by sewing in the first single crochet that we have in the corner right here which is here to sew the bottom together i would recommend that you guys use a stitch marker or anything that you have to mark this stitch in place so that you know where to sew because this is going to be a little bit confusing so you're going to mark the middle of this stitch which is right here as you can see this is the middle so you're going to mark it together with the middle of the cluster that we have right here which is the one half double crochet that we did in the corner right here and you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So go through the middle of this stitch right here, as you can see. And then just go through the middle of the corner, which is the one half double crochet that we did before. And mark it together. So after you mark it, these stitches should be all lined up. So you're just going to start sewing from this stitch that you just marked until the stitch that you mark right here so this step is still the same as before so just go ahead and sew it across and then cut so you can remove your stitch markers now we're going to sew this part to the back and before sewing it i would recommend that you use a stitch marker again to mark the middle where the two granny squares are joined this will be really helpful to make all the stitches line up so that it's easy to sew however for the first stitch marker you will mark it in the single crochet that you have in the cluster here since we already sewed up the two other stitches in the cluster so this is going to be the first stitch that you're going to be sewing later on 
and then you're going to mark the next one which is the border of the granny square that you have joined together this is the middle so just insert your stitch marker into the middle stitch like this then insert it through the bottom panel so do this again for the next one insert it into the middle like this and for the last stitch marker you're going to do the same thing insert it through the middle and for the bottom piece insert it through the one half double crochet that you have in the corner before you start sewing go ahead and flip your project so that the wrong side is on the outside like this we're going to sew it using the same step as before which is the right side is facing inwards then you will start sewing from the first stitch marker until you reach the last one once you are done sewing this side right here and and this side right here just go ahead and sew the two sides that we haven't joined together this step are still the same as before i have done sewing the bottom piece as you can see this is the front of my bed the side and the back part this is how the inside looks like and you can weave in the ends if you'd like but i'm going to sew on a lining for this bag so i'm not going to weave it in now we're going to start making the top border for the bag and i'm going to show you how to start first you're going to make a slip knot then you can insert your hook any way you prefer i'm just going to insert mine here insert the slip knot into your hook and tighten it up then you're going to chain two and make sure to hold the end at the back so you have control over your yarn so chain one and two then go ahead and insert one double crochet into the same stitch i am going to carry my end as i make my double crochets just so that i don't have to weave it in then just continue inserting one double crochet in each stitch all around now this is going to be your next stitch because the right stitch to it is your slip stitch so you are just going to ignore that so just go ahead and insert one double crochet in each stitch all the way around so i have done inserting one double crochet in each of the stitches and now i'm just going to finish off this round by making a slip stitch into the first stitch so this is going to be your chain three and this one is going to be your first double crochet so go ahead and insert your hook into your first stitch and make a slip stitch so as you can see here i have four stitch markers so this stitch marker is, is going to be where I am going to stop making the single crochet in the next round. Once because once I have reached this stitch marker, I am going to go ahead and make this strap. So for this strap, I decided to chain 85. So for this step, it is totally customizable. So you can just choose where you decided to stop doing this single crochet and how many chains you want to do for your strap so in between of these two stitch markers i have 29 stitches here and it is also the same as this side so i'm going to go ahead and start with the next round so chain one and then i'm going to insert one single crochet into the first stitch right here so just continue inserting one single crochet in each stitch until you reach this stitch marker I'm going to insert one single crochet into the stitch marker and now I'm going to chain 85. So I have done 85 chains and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert my hook into the stitch where I have my stitch marker here and make one single crochet. When inserting your single crochet after you did the chains, make sure that your chains is going to be straight like this. Then you're just going to continue inserting one single crochet in each stitch until you reach your next stitch marker right here. So once you have done your last single crochet into the place where you have your stitch marker, just go ahead and make 85 chains if you're doing it like me or just how many chains you did in the other side so just continue until you have reached your number of chains 
and once you are done with your chains you're just going to repeat this same step which is inserting one single crochet just like before so insert your hook into this stitch where you have your stitch marker and make one single crochet and again making sure that the chains are straight like this and then just continue making one single crochet in each of this stitch until you reach your last stitch right here so this is going to be my last stitch and just make a slip stitch into your first stitch of this round so now what we're going to do is we're just going to chain one and insert one single crochet again in each of the stitches including the chains that we just did so i'm just going to insert one single crochet first into my first stitch and i'm going to continue inserting one single crochet until i reach this stitch right here so once you are done we're just going to insert one single crochet in each of the chains so that is basically it that is just going to be the step for this side too until you reach the end of this round so how you're going to insert your single crochet is you're just going to insert it on the top of the v shape right here just insert it at the top of this stitch and just repeat this step all the way down here so i just insert it like this so i've done inserting one single crochet in each of my chains now you're just going to insert your hook into the next stitch right here and just insert one single crochet now just continue inserting one single crochet in each of the stitch until the end of this round. Now to finish off, just make a slip stitch into your first stitch. Now chain one and insert one single crochet into your first stitch. And now we're just going to continue the same step, which is inserting one single crochet in each of the stitches. So you're just going to insert it all around until you reach the end of this round here so basically you're going to repeat this for how many times that you'd like i'm going to repeat this for three times because that is going to determine on how thick your strap is going to be so for example if you decided to stop inserting one single crochet in this round then your strap is going to be this thick but then if you decided to insert maybe two to three rounds of single crochets all around your strap is going to get maybe this thick or if you want it thicker then just go ahead and insert one single crochet until you have your desired thickness for your strap and also keep in mind that the more rounds of single crochet that you are going to do your border for this part here and here is also going to get thicker if you are doing two or three more rounds of single crochet then your border maybe are going to get this much thick so that is really depends on your preference so go ahead and make that and continue your round until you have your desired thickness so as you can see i have done the border and my strap right here and i have done my slip stitch so i am going to fasten this off by making a chain one and just pull your yarn and you're just going to cut your yarn and then i'm going to pull the yarn to tighten up the chain one and now all you need to do is just take your darning needle and weave in this excess yarn at the back and you can also weave in all of this excess yarn but i'm not going to do it since i'll be sewing a lining for this bag so i'm going to show you on how we're going to weave it in we're just going to go through the back of these stitches and just go through it and i'm going to skip this stitch right here and i'm going to go through it again just to make sure that it's really secure then just take your scissors and cut it so now this is how my finished product look like as you can see i added some ribbon and i also added some fabric lining into my bag so this is it for the tutorial thank you for watching and i'll see you again when the wild winds blow through the empty pathways of my